the Sugar and Spikes podcast, a show for everyone trying to navigate business and life without losing their minds. I'm Des, a coach and consultant who is entirely overeducated, habitually overdressed, and obnoxiously honest. And I'm Tammy. I'm a psychologist. Was I supposed to say more? You know what enough said. We talk about mindset, mental health, and making it all work in the big, bad business world. One quick note. We may be mental health professionals, but we're not your mental health professionals. So enjoy the show. Focus. That's Focus. what we were talking about. Focus. Focus was what we were talking about. Focus is what we need to do. Bring it back. <laughs> this is actually, I think, the first time in the history of us recording that we've lost an episode. Yes. Yes. We were... Dear, dear listener, we, we were like 10 minutes into something. Oh, and, my gosh. And it was pretty good. And then and then my pup oh, came in guy. and got, got all caught wrapped up in, in wires. Oh, my gosh. And he panicked. Mm-hmm. And now we're here. <laughs> he took your headphones right off your mm-hmm. head. <laughs> yeah. Poor pup. But okay. focus. Okay, focus. Focus. Hmm. So... <sighs> Should we start from the beginning? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Why are we just leading in like we did with the last? <laughs> Here. This episode is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little counterintuitive. Um, it, it's going to be really, like, the first 10 minutes are going to be really weird because I'm going to feel like I'm repeating myself because I am. And but, you are. But you, it's okay. you, dear listener, have not heard it. Okay. Um. So, you know what? We're all going to. We're all we're gonna, gonna we're get in through this together. This. It's gonna be it fun. Is, it is a growth experience for all involved. Um, yeah, a bit of a counterintuitive episode. If you've listened to us for a minute, you should probably know by now that that's kind of how we roll. If this is your first time listening to us, it's gonna be a little different. Um, but yeah, so in the last episode, I talked very briefly about my word for the year and it's been something I've been thinking a lot about. So of course I have so many ideas, um, which leads way into a new episode. <laughs> my word for the year, if you didn't listen to the last one, and if you didn't, you should go listen to it. You it's may good. want to listen to that first mm-hmm. and then come back to this one. Yeah. But, uh, for those that don't feel like doing that. My word for the year is focus. Mm -hmm. And it's this idea of not necessarily like lasering in on like myself and what I do, but also or and also being aware of the messages that are coming like at me (laughs) and not in a like one thing we talked one thing Tammy brought up quite immediately um was like I'm not talking about a unified message no like just a refined message well I think maybe a thoughtful consideration mm-hmm. of what gets filtered yeah. versus what gets let in yeah and Essentially, like, taking stock of who is influencing your life and what messages are really coming at you because, especially with social media and everything, like, it's so easy to be bombarded by 20 different messages in 20 seconds. Oh, right. And one's like, do these five things. And then the other one is the three things not to do. And they're the same Same thing. thing. And you're like, well, "Uh, now I don't know what to do. Now I'm just frozen. Do I do them? Do I not do them? And then you listen to like another one and they're like, do these three things. Mm -hmm. And one of them's the same, but the other ones, it's crazy. It's so difficult to make sense of all of that. And I started really thinking about this um, when over the last, I don't know, month or two, I found myself getting really overwhelmed and stressed out every time I would open my email, every time I would scroll on social, like I would just walk away just being like, I don't even know what to think anymore. Yeah. You know? And I saw I saw it affecting the stuff I was making Mm -hmm. because it was very like I don't want to say half assed, but like kind of maybe all over the place or just like Yeah, very confused, very like 
neutral and inauthentic in a sense because one thing I've learned over the last year is I have a very strong voice and I do have a strong perspective that perspective tends to be it depends and let's figure it out which is such a messy like let's just stop for a minute like that's such a messy perspective to have Mm -hmm. because it depends means there's no one answer and what do people and no one likes to hear that no one likes to hear that what does that do like It just makes your anxiety, like, over the, you know, like, a million times worse. Well, I think it's because people are looking for that answer, right? Like, the anxiety comes in, I need an answer, I need to know what to do. And it's like, well, what do you want to do? What do you think you should do? What are you considering? And then, like, maybe offering an alternative perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, have you thought of it this way? Yeah. Or, oh, what if you looked at it from this point of view? Mm -hmm. Like, what if you just shifted a little bit? Yeah. So, like... I think, because, like, but that's, there's so much more work yeah. inherent in that, right? Like, I can't, I can't tell any of the listeners what they should do for their businesses or for their professional development, because I don't know what they're thinking about doing. It would be like if you came to me and you were like, I want to build my social media presence. And I was like, you should start using LinkedIn and... Like, if I didn't ask you any question, if I didn't know anything, that could be a whole new wrench because you're like, well, I was only thinking about, like, Facebook and Instagram, and now LinkedIn's an option. What the fuck? Like, now I'm even more confused. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, or, and maybe I don't know what I'm doing because if that wasn't even on my radar, should I be doing this? Like, it's just so many things. Like, I don't... Yes, so... So, like, I think... <laughs> So this was something I brought up before that yeah. you're just hearing for the first time, but Des is hearing more than once, is that it's kind of like the process of therapy, right? Mm-hmm. Versus maybe a more coaching kind of orientation. Not necessarily, but um, maybe make the difference that way. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe edit that part out. I guess, like, I mean, I do coaching very unlike every other coach. But that's so, what yeah. I mean, right? But, like, mm-hmm. that idea of you're going to come to me and I'm going to tell you what to do, Mm -hmm. right? Versus therapy is more like Des comes to me and is like, I have this problem. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, what have you tried? Mm Because first of all, if you don't know what you've tried, you may be suggesting something they've already... Yeah, they already hate. What if we attack it in this direction? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I already tried that and this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. So Mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. So it's, it's about... Getting to know the person Mm -hmm. and saying, okay, so based on what you told me, there's different ways we could approach this. Mm -hmm. Here are some options. What would you like to do? Well, then when they just, when they say that, like, then there's buy-in. Like, there's immediate (laughs) buy-in. Like, so many coaches, like, do extra work. Like, I don't know. I have a very therapist of you. I'm like, I I don't work more than my client. No. Um, No. But they don't teach you that in coaching school. No. Right, like, but well, I'm like, I don't do that. Shit. It's kind of like when someone says, "I'm really mad." Mm-hmm. Well, you mad about this, this, or this? Why don't you just say, "What, what are, are you, you mad, mad about?" about? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, stop trying to solve problems and <laughs> let people figure it out. Anyways, voices and anyway, messages voices and, and focus. messages. But what focus. Is, but I, I mean, know, I know. <laughs> But, like, could you imagine going into a therapy session and mm-hmm. having five therapists mm-hmm. all there, and they're just, what about this? What about this? What about this? And they all five may have great points of view, mm-hmm. great ways of looking at things, mm-hmm. things you wouldn't have thought about, but you can't process any of it because there's five of them. Mm-hmm. Right? So... That's where that idea of fit comes in. Yeah. So you're not listening to five, but you find one that's a good fit. Not Mm -hmm. necessarily the same. Right. But just a good fit. Yeah. And then you can work well with that one. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I thought of when you talked about this. Yeah. Is like you can't have five amazing messages and just be so overwhelmed you can't make sense of them. Mm -hmm. So you narrow it down. Yeah. To whatever you can handle. What feels reasonable. Like I've... I've kind of filtered my like 
cacophony of messages into probably five. Mm -hmm. I would say I've picked, um, I've been super intentional with keeping like two voices where most of the time I see something that they make. I'm like, oh, I, I don't like that. And like, I have a very strong reaction where it, maybe it's not negative, but critical. Well, let's talk um, about that, right? So somebody might say, well, that if you're having really strong negative reactions, maybe that's not something that belongs in your feed. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to that? I think that that is a very, my, my unprofessional response is <laughs> that's ridiculous and lame. Um, but I mean, I'm a, that's my response too. Like maybe it's the therapist training, right? Mm -hmm. Where as soon, like anytime I'm interacting with the world and I have a very strong reaction, I don't like, sink into that strong reaction i'm able to immediately notice of oh hmm. that's interesting what's that about yeah like what it, what is the trigger there what yeah. is it that's making like all these bells and whistles go off is it the setting is it the way they like project themselves is it the me do i not agree with the inherent like meat of the message like what is it and then, like, process through it. But that's you know? different for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Like, you and I can look at one message and mm -hmm. both have really strong reactions. And mm -hmm. they might be for completely different reasons, yeah. right? So it's important to say, hmm, hold yeah. on a minute. And, and figure that out for mm -hmm. yourself. But I think, like, for me, the negative reactions and the people that I don't necessarily fully agree with, they help me think through and understand what I do believe. Yeah. You know, oh, for sure. Because if I see someone talking about business in a way where I'm like, that's wrong. Like, it's really easy to be like, that's bullshit. But it's a lot harder to be like, that's bullshit because mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's, I've been intentional around that because I know that that's my thought style and my working style. Well so it's to keep that growth and I talked a bit about like clarity and having like the like like make it like putting a polish on stuff and keeping that like critical thinking edge so that's mm -hmm. definitely one reason why I do have those voices because if everyone agrees with me I'm never gonna grow right and I one thing that you said that I really liked is it helps you establish your point of view mm -hmm. and your voice and you had talked about not any time in the, in the, what you guys are listening to, but in some nebulous before time, mm -hmm. Des was talking about how she can look back at posts she's made and be oh, like, yeah. oh, I was really into that person or I was mm -hmm. really into that person and describe that as being like kind of overly influenced. Mm -hmm. And I think that you bringing up this finding of your own voice, mm -hmm. you inevitably go through that. Yes. Right. So like when you initially start to do something, let's say you're posting content, mm -hmm. you're going to kind of inherently not straight up copy as in plagiarize. That's mm -hmm. not what I mean. But like you're going to go with, hey, that style seems kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try it that way. Mm -hmm. And then you'll do that and kind of take from it what you like and mm -hmm. kind of discard the rest and then maybe do that again. Mm -hmm. And you'll continue to evolve that way mm -hmm. until you have your own more like sophisticated sense of what your message is and how you want to say it mm -hmm. right and that's in a lot of different fields that doesn't just apply to like developing content mm -hmm. like it it's everything from like how do I interact interpersonally with people mm -hmm. to how am I a therapist in the room like mm -hmm. it 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 really it's just a process of growth yeah. well and if it, one thing that I am just kind of thinking through is like if you are heavily influenced by something and if it does strike a chord and you're inspired to like have a response or something like no note, note the piece that inspired you that struck that chord that really prompted you to make something because then it becomes a conversation. Yeah. You know, and we see that in academia. Like, of course, like Tammy and I come from a major academic background. Yeah. <laughs> That's research yeah. papers, right? It's. Yeah. I'm doing this study based off of this other study, but I'm doing this one because I thought this study was not great. So and these I are the ways it. I don't think it was yeah. great. And here's the ways I'm going to fix that mm -hmm. in mine. Mm -hmm. Like it's a conversation and so many people are scared to like have these conversations and open in this like dialogue. 
of beliefs and understanding and it's really just people that are shouting the loudest and I don't know trying to make the most unique loudest voice to take credit and that's it but gets hard to follow it does get hard to follow and I think that dialogue it can be very vulnerable because mm-hmm. you have to share your views your perspective, Mm -hmm. things that are really meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. So it can be really difficult for people to engage in those kind of authentic conversations, Mm -hmm. whereas maybe just saying something and going with the loudest voice where you never have to, like, give back Mm -hmm. can be a little safer and Mm -hmm. not quite as threatening. I don't know. It's a little different than what you were saying, but it's just something that I was kind of thinking about. No, I... I mean, I I would agree with that. I also think that creating the dialogue and everything, like, noting who is engaging in that manner, like, it's not the people that have the loudest, most, here, like, the three things to do type of content, but it also, like, it's... And this feels really like patting myself on the back and being like, but we do, we're doing it right. <laughs> but it's like, it's the people that allow for the mess or the ones that are like, I saw this and here are the ways I vehemently don't or the reasons I vehemently do agree with it. Like the ones that show they're interacting with the field, like I don't care what field it is, but the ones that show that they are actually a part of the community at large yeah like those are the people to follow versus the ones that are like i'm making this up as i go Mm -hmm. and you're like following them blindly into the night without without i mean really any reason yeah i read this really amazing article where it kind of talked about the difference between being an influencer and being a thought leader Mm -hmm. or thought leadership um and i really appreciated that because or I really connected with it Mm -hmm. at least um this idea that thought leaders are really about expertise they're about knowledge they're about um bringing that to people with a sense of caring and a Mm -hmm. sense of like I want to help I want to better my community industry niche Mm -hmm. whatever um by giving by providing that Mm -hmm. right but they have a real solid foundation of expertise. And mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be school. No. Like, I don't want people to hear expertise like, oh, you're saying you're experts because you have all the school. I'm not saying that. Mm-mm. I'm just saying that how have these people who have these voices mm-hmm. developed their expertise and knowledge, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, and really being passionate about it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm really passionate. I've said this before. You've said it before. I'm really passionate about what we do on this mm-hmm. podcast. Um, and so like, I don't do it for money. I don't do it. (laughs) We definitely don't do it for money. I, and I don't do it for fame because let's admit we're never going to be famous when your message is, it depends. (laughs) That's not a sexy message. Yeah. But I do it because I'm passionate about it. I want to help other people. I want to educate other people. I want to start that dialogue. I want to invite people to dialogue back with us, Mm -hmm. right? And to help improve things. Yeah. So, I mean, for, I mean, so anyway, I I don't really have an end to that kind of speech. No, I think, like, that's the thing. I can think of so many people that are just, like, shouting, shouting, shouting kind of into the void and I can only think of a few people that engage in like the conversation at large yeah you know or will stand by their stuff and really kind of own it like one person that I have intentionally kept in my world is Amanda Francis and there are some things about her where I re- like I really like there are some things about her that I really don't like and she's de- she's one of those people where I see things I'm like oh what's that about mm-hmm. like what is that reaction about but one thing is like she had an email snafu like a couple weeks ago where emails that were supposed to be sent out throughout the day were sent out all at once so it was like four emails at once oh, okay and someone like wrote in and was like what are you doing and blah blah and was like being pretty critical yeah. and she posted a screenshot and then 
responded to it in the larger audience. Mm-hmm. Like, she made that known. She was like, I was critiqued because of this, and here's what I believe. And I was like, I don't necessarily like her response to it. I like the way she handled it. Yeah. So you liked an aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it's not just, like, blindly charging into, like, the ether. It's, I'm doing this and here's why. And I have this developed worldview. Versus people that are like, go forth. I don't <laughs> do these three things. Yeah. It's. I mean, I think, really, you don't necessarily have to agree with someone's worldview mm-hmm. to appreciate it. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. So, like. I can appreciate things about her worldview that I really, really like while mm-hmm. also saying, oh, there's these things that I don't like and don't agree with. But I mm-hmm. appreciate that you are authentically you mm-hmm. and are doing things in line with your worldview. Yeah. And she like stands in it and knows it. Yeah. You know, like good. Like, yeah. The world needs more of that versus people that get thrown off their axis when they receive negative feedback. Yeah. Like and they're just like, oh, they're just a bunch of fucking haters. Yeah. Like she posts a lot of times about like, the haters and stuff because she is very much a polarizing personality and i'm to the point where i'm just like i don't understand why people are sending these negative messages to her because it's not like she's gonna care well i mean and i think that feedback Mm -hmm. i mean there is stuff that's just like brutally shaming and not at all valuable right Mm -hmm. but there is also something to be said for like If let's say you posted something and somebody posted, I can think of even something that did happen Mm -hmm. um, where somebody posted a very strong reaction to Mm -hmm. what you had written. And instead of being like, oh, you're just a fucking hater or just blocking them. Mm -hmm. You were like, hey, I'm so sorry that you took it that way. I didn't Mm -hmm. I didn't in any way mean to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, And then I thought that that way of dealing with it Mm -hmm. showed like, hey, I appreciate that you have this other perspective and mm-hmm. there's been some sort of, you know, that wasn't my intention and mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry that it like struck that chord with you. Yeah. So you didn't just say, oh, this person was like a fucking hater. Mm-hmm. I think so. I don't know what I'm trying to say, except that I'm trying to <laughs> say something. It's <laughs> I'm confused now. Yeah. This, this is a topic for another podcast, but, but we're here and we're in it. Um, sorry no but it led me here organically i know friggin inspiration right Right. it gets to like the core of what we always say like it's just it's so messy Messy. and it takes those those extra moments of thought yeah you know and really deciphering whether or not it's is this negative feedback because they're just like an internet troll is this negative feedback because they care am i having a strong reaction because i don't gel well am i having a strong reaction because i'm triggered like all of those responses it's essentially two sides of the same coin yeah if we stop and think about it those strong reactions are indicative of something and it's those moments it's it doesn't even have to be long like the Mm -hmm. times so many times where i've been like that's interesting i'm able to like think through it in i don't know probably less than five minutes yeah if i'm really honest probably less than three and there's times i'm gonna be honest with you where i'm like fuck that and i just i just move on i just move on like i don't want to do the work but there's other times when i'm like hmm and i do want to do the work so Mm -hmm. like Anyway. It, it doesn't always have to be work. There's no always well, one it, way, right? And it's noticing trends. Like if yeah. you're if you're really like fuck that like every time with like some message. Um, like honestly, Tony Robbins is someone where like he was in my feed for a minute. I know he was in my feed for a minute, and I was just like after maybe a month or so, I was like, no, I'm just done. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't ha- I didn't have the space or desire to have that in my world and I didn't care to like investigate it anymore. And that's okay. Yeah. So like not doing the work is fine too. Yeah. Just notice those trends. Um, I was going to say something, but then I didn't know if I wanted to. What were you going to say? Like, it just kind of goes back to this idea of like, we're not going to tell you what to do. Yeah. We're not going to tell you what to think. Mm-hmm. We're not going to give you 
five steps to do mm-hmm. and three steps absolutely don't. We're yeah. going to suggest ways of approaching mm-hmm. and then let you be your own person, yeah. obviously, and like have your own autonomy and decide what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And then say, that's OK, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's really like goes with what we were just talking about, but it just made me think of it like we don't have some magical system. Yeah. It's just like. We will never give specific questions. Mm -hmm. We give general guides. Mm -hmm. Think about it this way. Think about it that way. But do your own work. Do Mm -hmm. your own process. Do your own unique way. Put your own stamp on it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's And I don't always do it. Right. Right? Like, I will do that. Hmm, It's interesting. Anyway, I'm just rambling now, but whatever. Well, I... And a part of that is knowing what you're looking for, right? Like, Mm -hmm. as I was going through my refining of who am I keeping in my world, I definitely had topics that I wanted brought up and, like, in my, in my, like, day-to-day life. Yeah. Um, Like, spirituality, business, stuff like that. Those were things that I wanted to keep top of mind. So I made sure I had people that were speaking to that. And also, like, at what level? Like, we're not the podcast for someone starting out who's looking for ten step the 10-step process and here's how I built my email list and stuff like that. We're the podcast for folks, I would say, who are a bit more, like, in the trenches, doing the work, ready for that, like, next growth, like, level. You know, mm-hmm. who have the space to process and do that work on their own. Like, our professional background isn't that of hand holders. Yeah. You know, like, we're not for baby business people. We're not for, we're not. We're not. We're and not. I know it feels exclu- like exclusionary, it's but. It's not exclusionary. I think we're here for anyone who can do the work mm-hmm. and not everyone wants to mm-hmm. needs to has to has the desire to mm-hmm. right yeah so like that's fine mm-hmm. you know what i mean like some people do need the 10 steps and they do follow the 10 steps i needed the 10 steps right like that's fine it helped me like those things help me find my voice like to your point looking back at the content that i created and everything like I've kind of run the gamut. Yeah, it's true. Even the podcast has kind of run the gamut in Mm. style and everything. Yeah. So that's fine. And it's knowing where you are and knowing kind of where you want to be. Like I kept Amanda in my content world because they're like, it's definitely, there's a part of it that is aspirational, you know, in terms of like random off the cuff stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's cool just it's it's being thoughtful about yeah it. it's being thoughtful and intentional like there are people where i felt weird like unfollowing them like people that i've had like actual relationships with like that i've had conversations with where i've unfollowed them but that was because i was having such strong reactions and i was like and i don't want to do that work like i don't want to i don't want to deal with these pieces that are coming up so knowing what you're looking for knowing what you need and only you can know that yeah it's it really goes back to like feeling weird about unfollowing people Mm -hmm. is really about assert I mean it's really about assertiveness and boundaries Mm -hmm. that's what we're really talking about right we're saying like your content's really not for me and that brings up guilty feelings that brings Mm -hmm. up like they don't really know if you unfollowed them like this is all you this Mm -hmm. is all your thing you're yeah. Or stuff but it feels like that's I mean laying down boundaries is so hard mm-hmm. and this is one way of doing that mm-hmm. and people can have very intense reactions to it mm-hmm. and I think that's our stuff yeah right um weird segue there I know but but that's what we're really talking about mm-hmm. we're talking about being thoughtful, having boundaries, even on yeah. <laughs> social media and the messages that you're allowing through your filter. Exactly. Right? Like what we talked about it so long ago and I got it from Kara who was on our podcast and everything. But like what are you available for? What are you unavailable for? Yes. Yeah. 
and deciding that and maybe the word like the word available and unavailable doesn't necessarily ring true to me but like what what am I allowing what am I not allowing like things like that like putting it putting your own spin on it Mm -hmm. um and then going like going forward and having it be okay yeah so which is hard Mm -hmm. so difficult messy yeah because it depends yeah right like, all the messages thrown in one like thought leadership and thought progression i do think ultimately depends on those struggles yeah like any sort of leadership really doesn't it's not naturally easy it's not if it were simple as five steps everyone be, would be a leader in everything yeah but it's about the intangibles yeah and the, the personal pieces mm-hmm. yeah it's being willing to do the work and trudge through that messiness yeah and you can only really do that if there's not like a million different voices yeah there has to be a manageable mm-hmm. a manageable number well if you think about it like Boards and everything, like huge CEO C suite boards, it's what, like 10 people, yeah. 12 people? Yeah. Like, there very, are limits, right? Yeah. Yeah. When businesses grow and everything, there, there's a limit in voices that have like true power and well, influence. It's funny that you were thinking about that because, like, I've been going back and reviewing like my social site stuff, prepping for some things. And I was, and when you have been talking about this, I was thinking about like, we work in manageable project groups Mm -hmm. because you want a diverse group, but only Mm -hmm. so many. Yeah. Right. So you have to decide who's going to be in my thought provoking group. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, however many is enough for you or right for you. But like, who am I going to put into that group? Mm Mm-hmm. And it can't be everyone. Mm -mm. So got to whittle it down. (laughs) Yeah. There's room. There's room for everyone in that there's room for enough groups. But. Well, and I think like I know for myself too, when I make a decision, Mm -hmm. it just feels so final. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It doesn't have to I can change my mind. Yeah. I mean, I followed and unfollowed a handful of people throughout the year. Yeah. Just. Like, hey, let's try this again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Not working. Or you add someone new. Mm -hmm. Like, you find you get exposed to something you didn't know was there. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I really like that. Okay, I'm going to keep that. And I think I can manage it with everything here. Mm -hmm. Or I've outgrown this one. So this one's moving on. Right. Like, so it's it's evolution Mm -hmm. of that. And it doesn't have to be this stagnant thing. Like, well, these are my people. Yeah. And we're done. And we're done. And that's it. Never to revisit it again. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. Because that's not how life mm-hmm. works. And so naturally, that's not how social media works. It's not how business works. It's not how c- nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So. So. Yeah, I guess that's kind of really what we want to leave you guys with is refining and. I don't want to say be critical, but be clear on the messages that be you thoughtful. guys. Yeah, be thoughtful on what's coloring your world, how it's coloring your world. If you're okay with it, if not, how do you change it? Yeah. Small and steps. only you really know. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be big. It doesn't have to be all and follow like a thousand people. Because that's the thing. Only mm-hmm. you know what's really right for you. Mm-hmm. And you may try out some things and they don't work and then you figure out, well, that wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's learning. Exactly. Right. So. So, and ultimately, the counterintuitive piece is, if this isn't for you guys, we'll never know. We'll (laughs) never. And if you think it's for someone else, let them know. Suggest it. But yeah, I mean, you and I have talked about that a number of times. Mm -hmm. Like, our message is not a sexy message. No. It's like, uh, things are difficult and challenging and messy and they depend and not... You know, like yeah. we live in the world of and and in the messy gray spaces mm-hmm. or the purple spaces if you're combining red and blue, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it can be difficult to be there. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, enjoy the gray on this fabulous winter, winter day. day. <laughs> 
And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye, friends.